Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve. Once again, we are on the road, in the air, making our way to Houston, Texas, where I'm gonna be doing a retreat with uh, Dr. Alex Gote at his high school for the seniors. And we're really looking forward to this time of coming together uh, to grow in the community and uh, sharing the faith with the guys in some pretty cool ways. So stay tuned and uh, see you on the plane. kind of awkward making a video at an airport. So I always want to make a video of the five things that uh, I learned discerning religious life. So throughout this trip, we're gonna go over the five. So I entered in 2010, left in 2017. And during that time, I learned some valuable lessons, which I'm gonna share with you, five of them right now. And I got scripture to back me up. Lesson number one, Matthew chapter seven, verses seven to eight. Ask, seek, knock. It's your vocation. If you don't ask, if you don't seek, if you don't knock, you're gonna stay still. Go out there, figure out what's yours and where you're being called. Figure out your calling, get help, make a plan, do it. Discern. So thank God, finally landed in Houston. We're here. I am at the baggage claim. Luckily, I got my bags. I got my guitar, I got my other bag, and uh, it's still intact because I asked them to put on a fragile sticker, and it actually works. So thanks for that. Second thing I learned from discerning religious life. Here we go. So we got Luke chapter 1, 26 through 38. This is all about Mary's yes. In this specific scripture in Luke, Mary's yes is un conditional even knowing what the road ahead of her was she said yes and she gave a wholehearted yes it wasn't like yes i'll respond to this call but do i have to change diapers yes i'll respond to this call but do i have to wake up in the early in the morning when he's crying she did it she knew that it was a call from god and that she could not respond in any way but by saying yes so in religious life i learned that when you feel a call from god you should respond yes wholeheartedly go for it see where he brings you see where he leads you and if you feel like that direction is not the direction ask him again say god lead me direct me guide me because sometimes we need to reaffirm our yes it's difficult for us as you know we're, we're imperfect human beings so we'll say yes to something and then we're like oh yeah absolutely i want to do it and then what happens we don't do it but when we have a recommitted yes or if we're able to say yes multiple times and remind ourselves of where we are and what we're doing it makes the journey a little bit easier oh today's the day we are getting ready to leave in a couple minutes for the retreat with the seniors from the high school and uh it's a palm tree so it's the morning we are in the super eight right now well, it's just me, I keep saying hi, but I'm here with uh, Oscar, he's on his way. He's gonna be making his way over here soon. Um, we have Jeffrey, who's gonna be coming to pick us up, but it's time for some breakfast. So coffee is much needed and uh, yeah. Mike, Dr. G said, my name is Steve from the Bronx, New York. And I'm here today to share my faith with you all, share a little bit about my story, my vocation, where I've been, and where I plan on going and to continue that path. first time that I was willing to hear the response that God had for me. Because every single time before that, I'd be like, God, where do you want me to go? And then I would feel some words, and I'd be like, nah, I'm good. Or like, uh, not right now. Or uh, check back with me in five years. But in that moment, I felt 
that prayer. God, I have no idea what you want me to do with the rest of my life, but if you want to let me know, I'm listening. And immediately in that moment, I felt the words in my heart, Stephen, you have a vocation. So it's almost the end of the night. We went through talks. We had adoration with the guys. Now they're at a campfire sharing stories about their past four years being at St. Thomas. And uh, we're getting ready to transition to the last piece for the night. I can't see where I'm walking. It's so dark out here, look. Uh, I'm here with my guy, Oscar. Where is he? Right here, what up? Oh, hey. What up, what up, what up? Yo, so what is uh, your... What's been your takeaway from the day? That these dudes got a serious brotherhood that has dated some four years and now like at the apex of it, um, they get to share something faithful, you know what I mean? So it, it's gonna be one of those moments that they, you know, they'll be talking about, they'll be talking about, but they have real good brotherhood. So I'm here at the airport in Houston, waiting to go home. My flight leaves in about an hour and a half, but it has been a really good, awesome uh, two days with Oscar, with Alex, and the uh, other teachers of St. Thomas High School in uh, Houston. And uh, I think one of the things that I saw was that these guys reminded me a lot of uh, myself when I was in high school and the type of kids that I taught when I was a teacher, which is really cool. Um, but with that being said, as promised throughout this video, I'm gonna be talking about the five things I learned discerning religious life. So here goes number three, number four. Number three. In the airport of Washington Continental, algunos individuos y organizaciones se han registrado para solicitar contribuciones hacia varias causas. Muchas gracias. Number three, Luke chapter 14, verse 13 to 15. This is the invitation to the feast. You have to serve the people to prepare for heaven you can't pick and choose you can't pick and choose who comes to the table or who knocks at the door and you have to be prepared to serve them if someone knocks on your door asking for food or clothes or any sort of assistance you can't like look through the hole and be like mm, don't want to serve this person but through religious life we learn that we're called to serve everyone every single kid who came across our our gyms our schools boys and girls clubs no matter what no matter who they were where they came from we were there to serve them they're invited to the feast so we're ready to serve thing number four mark 10 verses 35 to 45. this is about the want for power in thinking about the want for power the greatest members of the community were the lowest the greatest members of the community were selfless and they actually weren't powerful at all they had no role they had no authority but they were there as mentioned the previous one to serve i remember uh father pat 
who was there every single time that we came home from school. He was sitting in the living room watching, I want to say he was watching like, not The Price is Right, what show was it? He was watching Family Feud. And he would say, oh guys, come on in, come on in. Come sit down and watch Family Feud. So we'd sit there, we'd watch Family Feud, we'd, we'd laugh, we'd try to answer some questions. But the main thing is that he was spending time with us. He was getting to know us and asking us, how was your day? How is it going in school? What classes are you dealing with? Right? He didn't have a want for power. He had a want to build community. And we knew that he was someone who cared about us, who, who loved us and someone who we could trust. I finally made it back. And here is the fifth thing that I learned discerning religious life. It comes from Mark chapter 9, verse 38 to 41. If they're not against you, they're for you. I promise. The whole thing with this is collaboration. Don't be afraid to collaborate. You know when you see that you need help, you should go ask for it. But a lot of times we're like, no, 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 I got this. Don't be afraid to collaborate with people. Work together, build the kingdom. And if they know, they know. But really God knows and uh, we need him. We need help. So it comes from the people around us and especially with him in the mix. So that's my fifth and final tip. Fifth and final thing that I learned discerning religious life. So I'll see you in the next video and uh, there might be five more, but we'll see. Take care. Peace. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe and drop a comment below. Hit the notification bell for new content releases and follow me at The Bosco Beats.